After months of waiting, Joe Biden has finally announced his running mate, Senator Kamala Harris of California, one of his biggest opponents during the primary elections, will be his vice presidential nominee. The Harris nomination changes the campaign dynamics. It's certainly worth discussing, so get ready for some roasted opinions. The primary reason for having a vice president is to provide for an orderly succession should something happen to the president. During the election campaign, however, the most important reason for selecting a vice president is to shore up weaknesses in the presidential nominee's campaign. Accordingly, it's appropriate to look at how a vice presidential nominee strengthens and weakens a campaign. Kamala Harris is currently a U.S. Senator in her first term, having previously served as Attorney General of California for six years and District Attorney for San Francisco for seven years. Her record as a prosecutor is supposed to be that of someone simultaneously tough on crime and in opposition to the death penalty. She was known even before her election to the Senate as someone who worked to decrease truancy, an activist against the use of excessive force by law enforcement, and a champion against California Proposition 8, which declared that marriage was not available for same-sex couples. She was known, however, for her support for lengthy sentencing for convicted felons, and her record on the death penalty is confusing. She first pledged never to seek the death penalty, and then appealed a court order to vacate a death sentence successfully. In another case, she opposed the testing of DNA evidence when it was intended to exonerate someone on death row. Thus, she is simultaneously called an advocate for criminal justice reform and a supporter of police reform, while also being referred to as just another cop due to her prosecutorial record. In the Senate, Harris is known as one of the most ardent opponents of the Trump administration. She's argued against executive orders, opposed nominations for cabinet positions and both Supreme Court justices, and made repeated calls for members of the administration to resign. Harris also voted to convict President Trump on both charges during the impeachment trial. By the time the impeachment was in the Senate, Harris had completed her run for the 2020 Democratic presidential nomination, withdrawing from the contest just before the impeachment trial began. Harris is rated as one of the most consistently progressive senators currently in office, although she has been accused of mouthing the words and then failing to back up those words with action. Harris's primary candidacy was considered one of the stronger campaigns during the early months of 2019. She had a banner night during the first primary debate when she called out a fellow candidate for his opposition to mandatory school busing policies by pointing out that she was one of the students who was bused to school during the late 1960s and 1970s in Berkeley, California. That candidate was Joe Biden, the eventual nominee and now her running mate. She surged to the top of the polls, at least for a while, but declined thereafter and dropped out in December 2019 due to a lack of campaign funding before the first primary was held. What Harris contributes to the Biden campaign is that she is young, offsetting some concerns about Biden's age. She is also female, offsetting some of the criticisms about his reputation. Further, she is a minority, offsetting some of the concerns about his record on equal rights. She knows something about how to debate, too, which will make the VP debate against Mike Pence more interesting to watch. She is progressive and may appeal to younger voters. I can't help getting the feeling that she was selected more for these traits than anything else, but improving the presidential candidate's reach in key voting blocks is part and parcel of the VP selection process in our elections. Mike Pence was selected partially because he strengthened Trump's position with evangelical voters as well. I suspect that these concerns were at the forefront of Biden's mind when he was selecting his running mate, especially since he has a dubious record, is quite prone to making ridiculous gaffes, and due to COVID concerns, effectively campaigns from his basement. Harris brings weaknesses, too. Her record of seeking lengthy convictions for petty crimes has been mentioned more than once. It was one of the primary reasons why support for her own candidacy dried up. Tulsi Gabbard saw to that during the primary debates. Along with mentioning her prosecutorial record, she also mentioned Harris laughing when she was asked if she had ever smoked marijuana, and a lot of other details which effectively killed her campaign. Harris is from California, a state in which Biden holds a 20-point or better lead against Donald Trump. She can contribute her own support in her home state to the Biden campaign, just as all good VP nominees do, 
but that support doesn't add any new electoral votes like a nominee from a battleground state would have done. After her telling debate performance against Biden, her acceptance suggests that she was willing to compromise her own principles to team up with him. Her far-left leanings aren't likely to impress moderate voters in an election remarkable for its polarization. And yet, for quite a few progressive voters, she simply isn't progressive enough to satisfy their demand. With Biden's statements earlier in the campaign about needing a VP who could finish his term of office for him, there is an element of this election being less about Biden versus Trump and more about Biden's VP versus Trump. Stacked up against Trump, Harris's policy proposals sound more like House Speaker Nancy Pelosi's wish list, which suggests that the election could become something of a national referendum on both Trump's presidency and Pelosi's speakership. That further relegates Harris to less of a candidate in her own right and more of a proxy for the Democratic leadership in Congress. That puts her in a curious position given that some believe that Congress is full of right-wing extremists and fence-sitting moderates. It also puts her in an unenviable position when it comes to most conservative and many moderate voters who have little positive regard for Congress at all. I expect that Trump will come out on top of the presidential debates. I'm not so sure about the vice presidential debates, where I expect that Harris will go after Mike Pence's evangelical conservatism. Harris holds the top rating from NARAL on abortion rights, whereas Mike Pence ranks at the bottom of their list. I also expect much to be made of the fact that she is a minority and a woman against Pence and his known refusal to meet with women on a one-on-one -on -one basis. On the other hand, Harris's own record will be a factor against her, and Pence will certainly be able to score points simply by asking her why she accepted the VP position from Biden despite repeatedly challenging him on his dubious record on racial issues and his alleged behavior towards women. On the balance, I think that Biden's pick may have a positive effect with his base, although judging by the responses on social media, that may not be the case. Whether or not that will translate to a positive effect in November remains to be seen.